Welcome to Put a Word on It, a podcast presented by Men of Valor. In each episode, we're going to talk with a different man, but each one with a unique journey from brokenness to freedom. I'm your host, Rudy Kalis. I spent over 40 years as a TV sportscaster, then retired and joined the Men of Valor program as a volunteer. So join the conversation. Reconciling men to God, their families, and society. Welcome again. I'm glad you're joining us for Put a Word on It. You know, there are 67 men here on campus at Men of Valor, 67, and they have house managers, guys that are in charge of about 15 guys each. And one of those is Marvin Howe. Fascinating, because it's a tough job, because some guys just get out and still got a little bit of attitude or some things they may not like or this and that. He's got to be a real diplomat to be able to talk to them and get the right words to them and make them feel good. He has to be consistent, which is so interesting, because once you know his story, consistency was never a part of his life. This guy was tough, and he was a troubled kid. Here's his story. Marvin, you walked in here and I looked at those camo pants and those good looking shoes and smell good and big smile on your face. You always try to, you know, present yourself in a positive way. I do. Uh, I try to uh, keep my image uh, according to my responsibility because I have a lot. So I try to keep them hand in hand, you know, and uh, looking semi-professional but casual at the same time because I'm just a casual guy. (laughs) But have you always been kind of conscious of that? I have. I have to a certain degree, not not over vain about it, I guess you would say, but I, I always like to look good. I've always liked to look good. All right. Take me back. You're a kid, grew up in East Tennessee, right? Uh, Yeah. All right. Were you that same way when you were a little kid? By the time I got 14 or 15, when I realized like, you know, I need to, I need to start looking like somebody out here. I need to go get me a haircut and, you know, because up until then I was just busy running around and doing this, that, and the other. So... There come a time when I said, oh, I need to I need to tighten up here a little bit. And so since about the time I was 15, I've been about I've been like this. What kind of a kid were you growing up? Mean. Why? Well, my uh mother and father got divorced uh, after I moved down here from uh, Kentucky. And my mother just couldn't control me. And uh, I was, she had four of us. She was a single mother, so I'm the oldest one, and so I pretty much just get out there, do what I want, whenever I want. Was it because of the divorce? I think a lot of it was me. Um just the the neighborhood that I lived in, the friends that I had, it was just kind of, you know, I just wanted to be wild, you know, then and I felt I got excitement out of that, out of that particular lifestyle, you know, being up all night, running around, getting into stuff, you know, creating a bunch of chaos. Do you realize when you're starting to get into crime, did it lead into that? Well, um, the first time I got incarcerated, I was thirteen years old. Um <sighs> I got put in a state custody, which uh, I was gone for about two years the first time. And then I've- For I, what? For what? Um, What did I do? I know there was an assault at school. I know that had something to do with it. And then uh, we had broken into a couple of houses. Me and a couple of buddies of mine had broken into a couple of houses down there where I'm from. So, And then it just escalated after after that. As I continued to get older, the the- my my crimes become a little bit more serious and my time become a little bit longer and I just become a little bit meaner. And Were you trying to prove something to yourself? Or were you looking for love in all the wrong places? I mean, what's the deal behind a kid just living that way? Being a kid, I'm not thinking about the consequences of anything. I'm just saying, what do I want to do right now? How can I have fun? So there may be some kids that they want to go play sports or hang out with their girlfriends or something. My definition of fun was, hey, let's go do something to break the law. I want the police to chase me. Mm. So it's kind of like showing out. In a sense, it just brought me a sense of enjoyment. I mean, it was nothing tickled me more than to be running behind these apartments where I live, just left my little old tail away, running from the law, trying to hide from them. Eventually, how many times were you incarcerated? I think I've done about a total of 17 years. It's from the time I was 1993 and when I got out in 2019. What finally got you to the point that said, man, I'm sick and tired of this? Well, my mother died July 2nd, 2015, and when I was incarcerated, and uh, I just, you know, I just, I was just over it. You know what I'm saying? I done lost uh, my mother. um, Being able to be there for a father for both of my kids, I done lost that uh, opportunity. So I knew, you know, that that was a turning point 
in my life to where this is my starting point. This is my starting point over in my life right here, you know, where I'm going to start making the right decisions. I'm going to start being honest with myself, realizing the consequences and the fact that they don't only affect me, they affect everybody around me that loves or cares about me and vice versa. A lot of guys tell me that. They say, man, I uh, go back to my cell and think about, man, my kids, because you have kids and you look there and you say, I, do I want them to live the way I live? Is that part of it? It is. Um, because I'm a firm believer in leading by example. So instead of telling my son, hey, don't do this, I think that if he sees me not doing it and he sees me being accountable, taking responsibility, and he sees that, hey, you know, mistakes are made, bad decisions are made, but, you know, that doesn't mean that that defines who you are. So I want him and my daughter, you know, to see also, hey, you know, dad's changed. He's, he did all this, you know, but now that he's shown us, he's consistent with his behavior. He's consistent with his attention that he tries to give us. You know, uh, I think consistency has a lot to do with it, too. When did men of valor, when did faith come into your life? Because that's what changes your life ultimately is the faith. It's not something you do inside of you, and you know that. What I used to be was a, a believer, but not an active believer. And that, what I mean is uh, if you ask me, do I believe in God? Of course I do. Do I go to church? Do I read my Bible? Do I pray? No. Now, uh, I come to Man of Valor September 13th, 2019, and I think that that's the day that I really started investing in my relationship with God because up until that point, I was hit and miss and, you know, not sure where I stood on, uh, as far as how far I wanted to allow, let God into my life. You know, how much change did I really want? But I get, you know, when I got up here, I started seeing the blessings and I started feeling immediately through my prayer and through fellowship with the other guys up here. And, uh, you know, I started feeling it more than seeing it. You know, I'm seeing it, but and to me, I'm feeling it because I'm, you know, I used to be violent, full of hatred, full of bitterness, um, but just ugly all the way around. You know, I, I was mean, I wasn't no good. And, you know, it's been going on for a long, long time in my life. So I decided, I, you know, hey, this is serious business. I've done made the choice and I'm hearing other stories of the guys that's been here. And I'm saying, man, you know, they was in my position and look, you know, look what's God done for them. So let me invest in my relationship with God. And that's what I've chosen to do. You've went through, gone through the program, you're a house manager. I mean, you're doing stuff. It's been a year and a half now, two years almost. Why am I convinced that you won't slide? That you won't go back. You ever worry about that? I do worry about that. Um, I still live in this world and I'm still a, a a person that I've always been. And it's hard for me to change who I've been for the last 25 years. You know, so I just when I do feel that way, which is not often, but I do, uh, you know, I, I turn to God in prayer to give me more strength. You know what I'm saying? Lead me in the right direction. Show me the path that you want that you want me to take, because right now I feel lost. And so when I feel lost, I know God's still working with me because used to when I feel lost, man, I'm automatically going off the rails. Let me let me go on and do Marvin. But now I just stop. And so I'm feeling some kind of way right now. But so I go to prayer. You know, I go to my Bible. I go talk to some brothers or something that, hey, this is how I'm feeling. This is what I'm going through. Give it some time. You know, sometimes I think it's just best to sit real still and just. <laughs> Let God handle things. You know, the name of the show is Put a Word on It. Have you got a word for me? I do. What is that? Uh, my word is renewal. Uh-huh. As I look back on, like I said, as I look back on who I used to be, full of full of all that mess, and and I've been renewed into a new man, uh, you know, that I can honestly say that, you know, my love now is real. You know, my caring for other people is real. My relationship and my love for God is real, where it's used to, you know, I didn't have much love for other people or their circumstances or their situation really couldn't really couldn't have cared so i think that uh i know that god is definitely you know he's renewed my spirit emotionally uh physically you know and just just everything about me he's renewed my heart and my mind though especially i saw the bible verses that you had written down you've got fabulous handwriting Thank what's you. the verse you got for me i have romans chapter 12 verse 2 and it says uh do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. 
Well, God has renewed your life. And he gave you a nice fresh haircut too. He did. He did. <laughs> I pre he's been giving me the same haircut for about 20 years now. <laughs> hey, I like it too. We're in the same boat, brother. Well, let me put a word on it. I, I, I love his word renewal. You know, afterwards we talked and he said that he was in a courtroom where he uh, had to face a woman whose car he'd stolen, had burned it up, didn't care anything about it, just thought it was a big joke. And here's this lady then with tears in her eyes saying, well, I have a child and I had no way to get to work and try to, and he said for the first time, something inside him said, my goodness, what I've done has affected somebody else. That's a start of renewal. And that's for him to use renewal. Look what it's done in his life. Completely change him. God's done that. Can do that in your life and my life as well. And now he's affecting so many other men. And that's why he's a great counselor, a great leader here in the housing, because he's a man who has been renewed by our Lord. Thanks for joining us. Join us again next time for Put a Word on It.